What's up everyone, Fool Animix here. Welcome back to anime recommendations that are totally not shit and brain dead. If you guys didn't see, I made another video on this and it was pretty funny looking at them because they were hilariously bad. So I thought I should go back into it and, you know, you know, see how many dumb brainless people there are in the world and kind of make myself feel better about my own opinions. If you guys would like to see more of these recommendation videos where I clown on these poor fools then let me know leave a like on this video and why not subscribe you know why not it's just down there do it right now or i'll come to your house so without further ado and without more procrastinating let's look at some more bad anime recommendations if you like bookworm then you'll like osama ranking both wake similar emotions main characters are open-hearted makes loyal friends and achieves their goals what? I mean, if you look at it at that perspective, then I guess. But these two are completely different shows. <laughs> For one, Bookworm is kind of boring and it's sort of niche. And it's also extremely long. <laughs> There's like three seasons. Why is there three seasons of this? And Ranking of Kings, I think, is a bit more of a better show. And it's a bit more fleshed out when it comes to characters and stuff. Whereas Bookworm is kind of like one dimensional and shit. So, I don't I don't know about that. I don't I don't know about that one. If you like Yojo Seki, then you'll like Is there a fucking English thing that I can turn on? Nope. Okay, cool. Uh I'm pretty sure this is one of the Isekai um things. If I hover over it, maybe it'll say it. Nope. Okay, fuck me. Both are Isekai anime series, while Yojo Seki leans more towards action. Both anime feature a substantial amount of military and civilian strategic elements, as well as political considerations influencing every decision. <laughs> New? I would probably say no, mainly because Yojo Seki is a little bit more darker than your more your more recent type of anime, especially this generic JC staff motherfucker right here. Like, I don't know about that one. If you like My Girlfriend is Boring, then you might like Kanajo Kanajo. Both anime series are romantic comedies with comedy taking center stage, at least in the first season of Boring Girlfriend. Everything is humorous with minimal drama. The protagonist is an irredeemable fool, but incredibly incredibly charismatic. You know, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. I like both of these series. I think I lean towards Girlfriend Girlfriend, maybe from recency bias, but I really do like Boring Girlfriend. I think it's a really good series and I like the way that it ends. And Girlfriend Girlfriend is also getting another season, which is freaking poggers, man, because I need more of this copium shit, man. <laughs> so yeah, I would say good recommendation. If you like Neon Genesis Evangelion, then you might like Madoka Magica. Both anime go into psychological depths and focus mainly on its characters. Evangelion is less dark, but its characters struggle a lot. Um, I don't have an opinion about this. Uh, I've watched Ava once, and I've never watched Madoka Magica, and I'm now realizing how bad of a decision it is to talk about this. I think... Look, I know a lot of things about both series, but I don't think I can really compare a mecha show to a magical girl show. Whether or not they're psychological fuck-up shows, I still think it's a bit iffy, but I would say maybe. I, I don't really have an opinion about this. If you like Guilty Crown, then you might like VV Fluoride Eyes Song. Music theme, sci-fi, action, fantasy, mecha slash robot, AI, android, sets in the future where the world is ending, both have banger music, female leads, both have emotionless face, and personality but cute mm, i don't know about this one it's it's hard to make comprehensions between these two shows i think vv is a lot better show than guilty crown it's also a lot shorter and i think it tells more of a story than guilty crown because guilty crown sucks Sucks. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a bit iffy about this one. I think I'll say no, but kind of. If you like Overlord, then you might like Moonlight Fantasy. So I recommend these titles because they're both similar in makeup. Make make makeup but give you a different story the foundation of the genre of anime is however the same this is just saying they're both isekai therefore you'll both like them and i'm sick of it all right i'm sick of it i saw it before it doesn't make it a good comparison if they're both the same genre i think overlord is a lot darker series than moonlight fantasy and i'm actually glad that moonlight is getting a second season because that shit was a sleeper hit but i do think overall in tone overlord is a different show but i guess you can sort of make a resemblance between I don't know. <laughs> if you like 86, then you'll like 86 part two. No way, man. 
get edit. <laughs> oh no, it's another one. If you like a Kamiga kill, then you'll like Cyberpunk Edge Runners. You're gonna love every character, and the story itself is very similar. Trust me on this; it's worth your time. When he puts it like that, it makes it sound like <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Like, it's a good comparison. Because on paper, these shows are very similar. But at the same time, I can't justify recommending Cyberpunk Edge Runners to our Kamiga kill. It, it just doesn't... There's a line, there's a barrier right there, and I, I, I can't cross it. It's just a no. Wait, what the fuck? If you like Ava, then you might like Fruits Basket. The themes in these shows are very similar, and if you like one, you'll definitely like the other. What the fuck? Fuck. Nah, there's no way this guy just recommended a fucking shoujo anime from a mecha show that- uh, oh, I'm too tired for this bullshit. What kind of fucking crack addict <laughs> made this recommendation, man? What the fuck? If you like Jujutsu Kaisen, then you might like Chainsaw Man. Similar vibes, lit characters, cool action, go watch it. I can't remember if there was a similar comparison in the video before, but if there was any other anime that would compare to Chainsaw Man, then it would probably be Jujutsu Kaisen. But both shows are just so different in so many aspects. I think in this argument, I would say yes, because there's just probably just no other shows that could compare to Chainsaw Man. It's just, it's just built different. <laughs> if you like Tokyo Ghoul, then you might like Parasite. Both series deal with the coexistence of humans and supernatural creatures and the conflicts that arise from their interactions. Both feature main characters who are transformed or infected by these supernatural entities, causing them to struggle with their humanity. Um, yeah, yeah, I would say this is a good one. You know, I mean, this is probably the closest comparison that you can get. They're both pretty edgy series. And yeah, I feel like if you like one, then you'll like the other. Okay. If you like Ray Zero, then you might like Mushoku Tensei. I don't know, but both the best Isekai anime. <laughs> you know what? I would actually recommend these two for one another. I reckon if you watch Mushoku Tensei, then you'll like Ray Zero and vice versa. Ray Zero, I think, is a bit more darker, and Mushoku Tensei has a bit more of a story. But yeah, I, I think I would recommend these two two shows actually all right let's make some people mad if you like my hero academia then you might like black clover both series couldn't be any more different than they already are as black clover is set in a magical world while my hero academia transpires on earth where people wield so-called quirks the two series are link as their heroes have no powers which are the main drives behind each of their respect. Um, yeah. I like how he knows that the series are very different, but they have like little individual quirks <laughs> that make them a bit more, you know, coinciding. So you know what? Yeah, I would recommend Black Clover to My Hero Academia fans and vice versa. That went way too well. I don't know how that didn't go poorly. <laughs> Bro, this, there's no way this is fucking real. Who the fuck? <laughs> If you like Chainsaw Man, then you might like- I'm, I'm just gonna throw a picture on the screen. Oh, uh, what the fuck? Both anime feature a dog named Pochta. I know this is a shit post, but what the fuck? Hey, what, what is this? If you like Toradora, then you might like Plastic Memories. They have a similar vibe and characters. Both are emotional romance dramas with a lot of comedic scenes. No, because Plastic Memories suck and Toradora is amazing. <laughs> oh wait, there's another one. If you like Toradora, then you might like Horimiya. Both series have very similar feel, but slightly different passing in the main character development. If you watched either and you like it, you will have a great time with the other one. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. Bro, if I see another one of these fucking recommendations, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. If you like a coming guy kill, then you'll like Cyberpunk Edge Runners. You are not creative in figuring out that they basically have the same plot line, all right? You're not built different. You're not anyone special. Just stop, stop. Please. If you like Horimiya, then you might like My Dress Up Darling. They both are about high schoolers who become friends by some crazy coincidence and fall in love. That's like the bare minimum of what it is. Congratulations, you now described every rom-com ever. You know what, I would say yeah, but no. No, I'd say yeah. Oh, here's an interesting one. If you like Devilman Crybaby, then you might like Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Firstly, both anime have 10 episodes and similar pacing. Also, they share similarities in soundtrack, sexual content, and their general vibe. For me, both Edge Runners and Crybaby feel like they are some kind of drug <laughs> with intense feelings of violence and emotion. What the f 
fuck? All right, you piqued my interest and then you completely blew me off the rails. Personally, I would say no. I don't know. It's kind of difficult. I really like Devil Man Cry Baby. I think it's very, very underrated. I feel like not a lot of people watched it that should have watched it. And I kind of feel like at the same time, if you watched Edge Runners, you would like Devil Man. But there are certain aspects that are a bit different. I would say yeah, but the explanation is terrible. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. No. Why are you here? If you like One Piece, then you might like My Hero Academia. They both have powers and abilities and pretty much everyone has them in both anime. I feel like a four year old just typed that. Oh my God. Look, both shows are incredibly mainstream. All right, if you like either show, then you'll like either one. I don't have a problem with that. But the fact that you describe it in the worst possible way makes me cringe. <laughs> it makes me cringe. Like, yeah, but no, fuck you. <laughs> Wait, there's another one. If you like Neon Genesis Evangelion, then you might like Madoka Magica. Both are deconstructions of their retrospective genre. Ava being Mecha and Madoka Magica being, you know, Magical Girl. With a dark tone that hooks you after a few episodes as our young cast battles traumatic, dangerous creatures. You know what? This explanation kind of gives me a bit of a retrospective. I don't know. It's still, it's still tough for me to compare these shows. Maybe I need to watch Madoka to give a fair opinion. But I don't know. I guess I would give it a maybe since I don't, <laughs> I don't I've never watched Madoka Magica. Oh no. Oh, I got a fucking paragraph to read. <sighs> All right, let's get into it. If you like Bookworm, then you might like Mushoku Tensei. Both are not only an isekai, but also a tensei, where the main character reincarnates in another world in a medieval setting. They're a bit different from each other because mine takes the body of a person who died as a child while Ryus was born in this other world. The thing that unites both animes the most, in my opinion, is the character's way of handling this new world, how intelligent they are and the slow and detailed development in the story. Mine and Rydius are thrown in this new reality with totally different culture and lore, with real inequalities coming from different social hierarchies, nobility, slavery, etc. But unlike the hero MC with high morale cliche, they won't try to change the world to their moral values and impose it on everyone. They'll just live their lives and take care of their own problems. Sometimes when they face some situation that comes from those things, they choose to accept it while applying a certain earthly fairness. Mine and Rudeus are brainiacs. They like to plan things and even though they might seem reasonable, sometimes they fail. This feeling of unexpectation is what makes both stories very rich. But also the fact that the authors take their time to tell the whole story of both mine and Rudeus. Unlike most series that show the MC as a baby child in maximum one episode and then he becomes an adult as if nothing happened before. Both are brilliant works. I'm a little bit torn on this one because I really don't like Bookworm. <laughs> I thought it was kind of dragging on a little bit more than it should have been and i'm gonna say i feel like it was paced also a little bit badly and i feel like mishoko tensei doesn't really overstay its welcome too often <laughs> but with this like description it makes me kind of relate this series a lot more maybe i'm just a little bit too biased on mishoko tensei to compare other shows that are like it for now i'll say maybe but i'm not too sure because i feel like bookworm is just the worst series <laughs> if you like parasite then you might like jujutsu kaisen this anime has a very similar vibe to ggk it leans more into the light horror than GGK. Also has the thriller action that some people would love some pretty cool fights. Very similar setting and to be honest, it was the first anime that sprung into mind when watching JJK for the first time. I mean, I think Parasite is a bit more of a psychological thriller or horror and JJK is just a famous shonen anime. <laughs> like, it's really hard to compare these two shows. Personally, I would say no. I think Parasite leans a bit more on the psychological aspect than JJK and I personally wouldn't recommend them. If you like one Punch Man, then you might like Emirates in Shadow, a very similar structure of an unorthodox main superhero who isn't trying to be part of the larger plot unfolding around him, but ends up involved anyway. Comedic and meta. No. <laughs> First off, this fucking embarrassment of a show is an isekai, and it's just a new level of garbage. One Punch Man is actually good. This is not good. <laughs> this is a dumpster fire being rolled down a fucking hill into an even bigger dumpster fire and it just makes it look cool. So no, I will not compare these two shows at all. Yeah. Some people just don't have a brain sometimes. It really, really annoys me. If you don't like Tokyo Ghoul, then you don't like Paris. 
<laughs> I just realized what I fucking said. If you like Tokyo Ghoul, then you might like Parasite. Both at first don't know how to deal with this new burden that has been placed upon them. Wow. Really, really dug deep with that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jesus. And I think that's enough comparisons for one day. My brain is tired and um, I feel like I lost 20 IQ points throughout this entire video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it for my sake. But yeah, let me know if you want to see more of this. I am more than happy to do this type of stuff as it's extremely funny to laugh at people's dumb opinions. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.